Truly surprising, wouldn't you say? It's a fake. The love of art and knowing how to hold a brush doesn't make a man an artist. You need an inner mystery. Please believe me, I have no wish to waste your time, but I would like to have a... Valuation. Exactly. Miss Ibbotson is extremely fond of this house. Maybe too fond. Are you here, Miss Ibbotson? What else can you tell me about her? Miss Claire suffers from a very strange illness. Everybody has moments when they prefer solitude. I haven't left this house since I was 15. But why? Well, I've never seen anything like it. Could you hazard a guess as to what it is? You bring me all the pieces and I promise I can put them back together. This is one of those evenings when one feels incomplete. Why much the same that way? I've been wondering how you can live like this. I mean, he's never seen her face. No one has. Well, I'm off now. Have a good day. You too. I spent the whole night just looking at her. I can't help myself. And you be careful. This is when mistakes occur. Who's there? I would have never have guessed that you would have ended up in a mess like this. Believe me, I don't normally behave like this. Neither do I. What's it like living with a woman? You're radiant. Human emotions are like works of art. Everything can be fake. There's still too many pieces missing. I often wonder if you're more interested in my furniture and paintings than in me. When you think you made it with a woman, that is when you lose your grip on strategy. Yes. You said there's always something authentic concealed in every forgery. The last time I saw Jeffrey Rush, he was playing a sweet, charmingly wonderful grandfather type in The Book Thief. And then I see a trailer like this and I'm reminded just how pervy he can be. Of course, his most famous perviness was in Quills, a film that I did not see because I felt that it would be too pervy. I actually got my hands on the screenplay at some point later and it was as pervy as I suspected it would be. Something about reading perviness is not quite as bad as seeing it. Uh, but I, with this trailer, even though this seems like it might cross the line a little bit, maybe I wouldn't watch it with my family, I still find this trailer appealing. Uh, the biggest thing I like about it is that it seems very Hitchcockian. Now, there's another trailer that came out recently for Grand Piano, which stars uh, Elijah Wood and John Cusack. Uh, and that's trying very hard to be Hitchcockian as well. But for some reason, I think doesn't quite hit the mark. As, as a matter of fact, one of the quotes in the trailer is instead has a, a, cri a, a critic comparing it to a Brian De Palma film. And of course, uh, at this point in his career, Brian De Palma has become known as being, you know, like the pseudo Hitchcock, you know, like Hitchcock, but not understanding why Hitchcock was Hitchcock really. Uh, and that's how I would, you know, qualify Grand Piano, uh, that trailer. But when I see this trailer, uh, this seems to me very Hitchcockian. It has the, the beautiful setting, the crisp filmmaking, very lush, uh, you know, very rich surroundings, which I think that's done quite well. And also uh, the psychological obsession and sexual obsession, which I think Hitch was Hitchcock's uh, really trademark. It was subversive in his most popular films because of the production code at the time. But then, of course, as we all know, when he was given free reign to do what he really wanted to do, uh, you know, you've seen uh, hints of it in Vertigo, obviously, that was very much about that. And then it got even more so uh, for films like Frenzy and such towards the very end of his career when he was given almost complete freedom. So I think he would have liked a movie like this, uh, and it just seems very compelling. Although I will say, he had a knack for casting his female leads. And of course, I haven't seen this film yet, but I think that Jeffrey Rush is, looks like he's doing a very good job. But this actress in the female lead role doesn't seem as compelling. She seems more like a Kim Novak, who I felt was like a, um, you know, all Hitchcock had available to him. I think Kim Novak is one of his weakest uh, uh, heroines. I think his best were, of course, Grace Kelly. She was the Hitchcock blonde. Uh, and also Ingrid Bergman did a very nice job in his films. Uh, Doris Day, I liked in The Man Who Knew uh, Too Much. That was very good. But I think Eva Marie Saint, for instance, in North by Northwest and uh, Kim Novak in Vertigo, I thought those were those actresses were lacking. Uh, so I, and also here I feel that, you know, I wish an actress had been cast. You had a little more, um, a little more, could add a little bit more to the role, even though she's just 
um, looked upon, which is also, you know, an object. She's very objectified, which is what Hitchcock did a lot with his characters. I think what helped is that he cast actresses who were able to fill in the blanks themselves. And I don't see that happening here. Uh, I'm very curious to see how Donald Sutherland's character plays into this. I'm very suspicious of him. Uh, but as you can see, it's art, this mystery here that they're put forth is already making me think. I think this is a great role for Jeffrey Rush. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm intrigued. I like this. So I'm curious what you guys think of this trailer. Uh, what do you think, what do you prefer? Do you prefer sweet, kindly Jeffrey Rush or pervy Jeffrey Rush? Or do you like that he mixes it up? Uh, write your thoughts down below. Thank you for tuning in for this trailer review and to see this trailer. Uh, and you can watch some more episodes right now.